With Windows 10 no longer receiving feature or security updates as of October 14th, millions of people are finding themselves trying to upgrade their computers to Windows 11, oftentimes at the expense of having to go out and buy a brand new desktop or laptop that they don't really need or want. Because unless you're gaming or you have a really demanding workload or you just like using the latest tech, you're probably getting along just fine with your old computer, assuming it isn't like more than 10 years old. But since Windows 11, doesn't even support hardware that is that recent, a simple software upgrade can easily turn into an expensive computer purchase. However, a brave few are keeping their money out of big tech's pockets, keeping their old PCs and not turning them into e-waste and making the switch to daily driving Linux and finding that not only does it work better than their old computers when they were running Windows 10, but they actually get better performance out of Linux on a 10 year old PC than they would get out of a brand new computer that has all the Windows 11 and manufacturer bloat pre-installed on it. But unfortunately, Linux is suffering from its own success. You see, for a long time, us Linux users, us desktop Linux users, thought that we were so much more secure than Windows users. And in the past, this was definitely true. I mean, of course, common sense and digital literacy are going to protect you 99% of the time, regardless of what operating system you're using. But Windows used to be much more prone to malware than it is now. And on the Linux front, things are obviously very different because the user is able to change any part of their operating system. So the security of the setup is ultimately going to be up to them. And of course, different distros are going to take different approaches to security, depending on what their use case is supposed to be. However, the main benefit with every desktop Linux distribution that it had for a long time when it came to security was security through obscurity. And not in the traditional sense of just keeping the design of something secret and hoping that that keeps it from getting hacked, because obviously GNU Linux distros are open source, but rather desktop Linux itself used to be such an obscure concept and have so few users, especially very few users with low technical skills, that it wasn't worth it for hackers to bother developing malware and supply chain attacks for it. But now that Linux is becoming so common that people actually have personal devices that are running Linux without even knowing it, Linux PCs are starting to get targeted more often. For example, I talked about two instances fairly recently where malware was discovered in the Arch user repository, which used to be this really obscure software repo, because if you think about it, the AUR is a community maintained repository that was originally just for Arch users and Arch was just for Linux users that wanted to build their systems from the ground up. So you got to assume that these people are pretty familiar with Linux and maybe there were some script kiddies on there that used one of the many Arch install scripts that have been developed over the years, but you get the idea. AUR malware and the AUR in general used to be fairly obscure and just not worth it for hackers to try to put malware in there. And even if they did, they would most likely get caught very quickly. But now there's all these Arch derivatives that are super popular and super user friendly, and they either enable the AUR by default, or it's just a click away through PAMAC or some other GUI package manager that these distros often include to make them more user friendly. And yes, there's usually a warning when the user ticks that button that getting packages from the AUR can be more dangerous than official repos because the packages aren't vetted as much. But someone who gets that warning before ticking a button might not understand it as well as someone who actually manually downloads and installs the PKG builds themselves or sets up an AUR helper like Yay and installs packages from the command line. Now, luckily, the Arch community picked up on those AUR attacks pretty quickly. The attacks themselves were not very sophisticated with no real attempt to hide the malware. And so I don't think it's very likely that those hacking campaigns were actually successful. Uh, but more recently, I saw a report that Xubuntu's website had been hacked and was serving malware on the website's official download page, or I think they created a new download page. But anyway, it was being served from the actual Xubuntu website. So instead of you getting the Xubuntu ISO uh, when you went to download it, you got this Xubuntu safe download.zip, 
which contained a text file called tos.txt that contained pretty much just a generic MIT license and Xubuntu safe downloader.exe, which is a Trojan masquerading as a link generator to get a download link for different Xubuntu ISOs. But in the background, this program would install a clipboard hijacker that would replace Bitcoin, Ethereum, or other crypto addresses that the victim intended to send money to with ones that the attacker controlled. So yeah, typical script kitty crypto stealing shenanigans and Judging by the various block explorers for the crypto addresses that the hacker hard-coded into their malware where they were trying to get people to send funds to, uh, nobody actually fell for this scam and sent the hacker any crypto. Now, I'm not exactly sure what the initial attack vector that led to this malware getting on the Xubuntu website was, but according to Xubuntu team members and the team lead, the problem appeared to be with their hosting environment, which I guess was some third-party WordPress website maker, and they're planning on migrating to a static website uh, in order to avoid those kinds of problems in the future. Uh, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Like if you're using a third party to make a website for you, and especially if you're hosting software, then a lot of the time they might use WordPress and go crazy with installing themes and um, not only make your website slower with a bunch of extra themes and plugins that you don't need, but it makes it more vulnerable since plugins and themes are usually the attack vector on WordPress rather than the core WordPress code itself. Uh, and there was also an attack on the Red Hat Consulting Team's GitLab instance. Uh, luckily, this attack does not appear to have impacted their supply chain or any of their products, but there is an ongoing investigation to figure out how the attack may have impacted Red Hat Consulting customers and their team members. Fedora, the Fedora project, also faced a DDoS attack back in August that caused a number of services to be unavailable uh, this probably had the most impact on end users because a lot of people on certain Fedora variants were not able to download updates for their packages through conventional means. So it's like, yeah, like a DDoS. It, it would almost be like a DDoS on Microsoft servers if you're using Windows, where it's like now you can't get updates because there's an attacker that's basically hacking the maintainer of your OS. Uh, so yeah, it appears that desktop Linux is truly under attack and Linux users, both old and new, need to be on alert, especially if you're using a distro that's very popular because the year of the Linux desktop is unfortunately creating new opportunities for hackers. Uh, distro maintainers should definitely reassess their infrastructure, maybe have more direct control over it, their websites and stuff like that, instead of relying on third parties. But unfortunately, there is no one size fits all solution. These are just ideas off the top of my head. But the beauty of free software is the fact that anyone can actually look at the code. They can do detailed testings of programs or entire operating systems. They can mirror them, uh, change them, redistribute them. And so that obviously makes DDoS a lot harder. Um, same thing with torrenting. You know, that's part of the reason too why I say always download your uh, torrents or download your Linux distros through torrents and definitely seed them as well. And so that also makes them more immune to attacks like that. And if you're an expert in any of these things, you know, maintaining websites or uh, maintaining supply chains for distributions, then there's a huge opportunity for you to collaborate with the distro maintainers to make us all safer. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can buy my awesome merch like this open base t-shirt or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% store-wide discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.